Late summer is an ideal time to look for signs of insects on plants. And we're going to hook up with Michelle Klingerman, an interpretive naturalist with St. Joseph County Parks, who has been learning about galls, and we're going to find out what they are. So you're at this mass of plants here, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. And I'm there good. are um, all kinds of little growths on these trees and leaves. That's what we're going to talk about, right? Right. We are going to discuss what is a gall. A gall. Okay, and that's G-A-L-L, -L, gall. Yes. And there's a lot of different kinds of galls, and they're all made by different things, and we're going to talk about that. But let's take a look at one so we can give people a sense of, sure. of maybe what we're, what we're looking for. Okay. This is an elm tree, right? That's correct. Ooh, look at these things. Okay. What, so what, essentially, is a gall? Well, a gall is an abnormal growth okay. that will show up on the plant. Okay. And it can show up on the leaf, it can show up on a branch, it can be in the bark of a tree. Mm -hmm. And basically what the gall is, is a chamber that protects a small insect okay. egg. Okay, all right. So it's the plant's reaction to either a, an insect biting the plant or laying an egg. Into the plant tissue. Into the plant tissue. Or on the plant tissue and, right. the, and the little larva yes. kind of tunnels in. So these little bumps our galls on this particular elm leaf, but we've got lots of different shapes and you've got some other ones here, right, that we could look at because they don't all look alike, right? Right, no, there's many, many different shapes. Okay. Um, we have, tucked away in, in our little elm here, we have galls which are called blister galls. Which just looks like if I just burned myself and got a little blister, right? That Right, that is They're correct. Almost, almost flat. Right, okay. and they are formed by uh, a particular insect, a lice. Oh, lice. Yeah. Because okay. it's not always the same insect, right? No, no. You can have, actually, you can have wasps that can cause galls. Okay. You can have aphids, which can cause galls. Wow. Beetles. And what even more? butterflies. I didn't know that. that wow. Was, I, I was kind of shocked that. about okay. that. Yeah. All right. Let's see. We're looking. Ooh. And, yes, now we're trying to find our, we have another really bizarre looking gall in here, which is called a spiny gall. Oh, okay. So it looks just like little thorns. And again, inside of that is all nicely protected is an insect. Wow, okay. Each insect is specific to a specific host, right? So Correct. whatever this insect is that laid it on this leaf will only lay it on this tree species. It won't go over to a cherry tree or a grapevine. Right, yeah, each, each insect has a specific plant that they're looking for. Well, as we kind of walk down here a little bit, um, maybe we can look for some others because there's a whole variety of plants and trees in here. Right. Well, the next thing we'll take a peek at here is we've got this grapevine. Oh, yeah. And, and it if, looks like it's been damaged by insects. Right. The leaves Ooh. are kind of curled up. And if oh, you yeah. look at the underside of our grape, you can see these galls and they are very very hairy they are and we can call them they're, they're known as a filbert gall okay um, and again inside of here can be a lice or wow. can be aphids there's a really big gall over here on this grapevine if we take a look at that right there that brown one right wow that's like gnarly looking what is that that's on also the grapevine right? yep it's on the grapevine it's another form of a filbert formed by either an aphid or a lice. Wow. What is interesting to me is they're, you know, some they're really hard. They it's are amazing. very, very like a, hard. I can't dig into this at all with my nail. So the plant is trying to protect itself mm -hmm. from the insect and the gall actually provides the perfect microclimate. So it's protected from the heat from the cold. For the insect inside. Correct. Right. And also from predators. Yes. I mean, I can't get in, so <laughs> I don't know what else could get in. Wow. Well, let's take a look here a little bit farther down, because I sure. see kind of some white globs on this bald cypress. These bald cypress right. things? Wow. Yeah, this They're, is... A, those are actually kind of pretty. Yeah, they are pretty, but these like are galls. Marshmallow globs. Yeah. <laughs> and again, these are really, really, really hard. I tried cutting into them, and it, it, it took a lot of force for me to get inside. Hmm. And this is formed from a, a, an insect called a midge. Okay. Overall, is this going to harm this bald cypress? No. Um, it, it's, it's kind of a, it's a relationship of balance. Okay. If you have too many galls, that's too many insects that are actually feeding on the tissues. Right. So yes, that could damage your plant. Okay. But overall, it, it, it's more of a, 
it's not so pleasing to our eyes, but yeah. it's really not going to hurt the plant. Certainly the insect wouldn't want to kill its host because no. then it has no place right, to right. Yeah. regenerate so the, the, and They don't want too many galls, yeah. but just enough. Okay, let's head over here into the shade Okay. and because there's some galls where the insects have come out. If we look really close here, Michelle, some of these galls are green and some are dark brown. The dark brown ones appear to be split open. Correct. So the little insect has metamorphosized inside there and chewed or crawled out? Yep, it's kind of like Elvis has left the building. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the insect wow. most likely would probably, I'm going to say it's a mite. Okay. Has left its little micro habitat. It's, yep, its little microclimate there. Okay, and this is on a cherry. Sometimes early in the spring, you can see these are bright red right. on, on the cherry leaf. And if we back up over here, there's some on a maple tree, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. this maple has galls with, with what we call our maple spindles. Wow. Now, if you split open a gall, can you see the insect, the larva? Typically not because these insects are so small, small. like okay. a millimeter or less in size. Wow. All right. So just out of curiosity, I have some of those that we saw on the cypress, and I'm just going to split it with my fingernail. Now, these are fairly soft. Not all galls are this soft. And I can see it's really juicy. Right. And there's a lot of material in there. But, but we're not finding the inside. I really don't. Now, some galls are a little bit easier to split open. Right. You brought a stem from a goldenrod plant. This mm -hmm. is a goldenrod ball gall. Correct. And I know sometimes um, you can split these open. People sometimes use the little larva inside for bait. Right. But um, if we split one, you have one that we can split one open? Yes. Okay. And there we go, right inside ooh, the ooh, center. Ooh, he's a little dark. Now he's already pupated. Correct. Yep, he is. He is going through his metamorphic changes and will emerge as a gall fly. A fly. Okay. And you have a book that you've used um, to get a little more information about galls, um, and so we'll have information about this book on the Outdoor Elements website. This one's nice because not only does it have a lot of text information, but there's great photos of insects laying eggs and how they do that so that's really great yeah this yeah this is an amazing book i i highly recommend it okay great all right well michelle thanks very much because there's all of this mystery about galls and so many shapes and so many sizes um and, and it's just sort of just a fun thing to learn about so it is a fun thing to yeah. learn about and if it's it's kind of it makes you slow down and kind of really really look at things look close yes look close it's amazing what you'll find correct all right thanks so much thank you abby up next, learn about the bountiful fall wildflowers known as wild asters at Madeline Bertrand County Park. Taking pictures is a great way to experience and share nature. If you'd like to share your nature pictures with us, go to the Outdoor Elements webpage and click on the Gallery tab to find out how you can submit your pictures. It's just part of the many things you can experience on the Outdoor Elements webpage.